Hello, everyone. Welcome to St. Matthew's for Sunday worship. We are so glad that you chose to join us today from wherever you are. I know things are crazy out there right now. The world is a stressful place to live in. There's a lot of uncertainty. And so let's do something today to prepare ourselves. I want you to just close your eyes with me for a moment. I can see you're not doing it. Close your eyes with me for a moment and just take a deep breath. That breath that you feel, that movement in your heart and spirit, that is the Holy Spirit rushing through you. That spirit that is always present to you. Just below the sound of silence, resting, hovering in your heart. We forget sometimes in the midst of all the wild craziness of the world that each day we have is a gift. Each day we have is a a gift to us to use as stewards of God's creation, of stewards of the gifts and talents that God has given us. It's precious, and we only get one chance at it. Be glad in the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Because this is the Lord's day. You know, we don't always give ourselves the time to do that, to just sit, to prepare our hearts and minds to be with God, to to give ourselves the chance to allow joy to be in us. You know, C.S. Lewis said that the commandment from Scripture that Christians are most likely to disobey is that commandment to rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Let that joy be in you and be complete. I do have a few announcements, too, I want to offer to you today as we prepare ourselves for worship. Uh, Today we don't have a children and youth ministry meeting because it is Father's Day. That's a heads up to those of you who might need to make a phone call after we're done here. I want you to know that uh, we have a new kind of Bible study happening Tuesdays at 1 o'clock live, but you're welcome to catch it at another time because we offer it on YouTube. It's still available on Facebook afterwards. What Jesus actually said, it's a Bible study focusing on Jesus as the Word of God, on the words of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus that were given in the Gospels as a way to experience Scripture in kind of a, a different lens with a different light. Uh, There's quite a lot of things going on as well. Um, Even though we don't have the children's ministry today, Kids Connect is being offered on Thursday morning as well. So know that that is also happening with a lesson, a prayer, an activity. You can let our children's minister, uh, Amy Trias, know if you'd like to attend that. She can send you the link and the password for that. Uh, We do have a wonderful outreach project. Our outreach committee is doing some incredible work right now, even in this trying time, to give back to the communities around us. And so uh, we're doing lots of different things, but right now we've got a diaper drive happening between June 29th and July 13th. And the reason we're doing it those dates is because we'll offer communion again uh, the last Sunday of the month, and so there'll be opportunity to pick up home communion kits and, um, and share in that sacrament with us again. And when you do, you know, it's, it's good to bring something as well, to bring something to give back. Uh, and so we always bring those offerings, of course, uh, when we come uh, and receive from God. And so it's an opportunity to give back through a diaper drive. You can find more information about that in your bulletin as well today. There's a list of uh, prayer list in there for folks in our community who we always want to be lifting up in prayer. And other than that, I just want to welcome you. I want to thank you for being who you are, for being the people of God, for having such grace in this difficult time, and for journeying with us through this, and for your loyalty and support, and the incredible people that you are. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Let the Spirit move in your heart as we prepare ourselves for worship this morning. Thank you, and God bless.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The child grew and was weaned. And Abraham had made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, for he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and he sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite of him, a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look upon the death of the child. And she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, and he said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The Word of the Lord. Please join us in reading this portion of Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me. 
for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful, Savior, servant who puts trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Glade in the soul of your servant, for you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who come upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of all my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among all the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you O lord have helped me and comforted me a reading from saint paul's letter to the romans what then are we to say should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound by no means how can we who die to sin go on living in it. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But we have died with Christ. We believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, for you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in form.
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, a disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing is secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me, is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. Wherever you are today, wherever you find yourself, whatever place you're in, I want to welcome you. I mean that. I am really glad that you're here with us. I appreciate your presence, your faith, your hope for the future. I appreciate you. It feels good to be acknowledged, doesn't it? And the opposite feels bad. Remember that time when you were about 13 years old and the PE class goes out to play kickball, right? And the teacher does this thing that is sure to create awkward social interactions for decades to come. He chooses team captains to pick the rest of the teams. If you had to try and engineer a situation to create future drama to expose our vulnerabilities and disappointments, I don't think you could do much better job than that. It's no better for the team captains though, right? These young people, these teenagers, are now tasked with the unenviable burden of choosing which of their fellows to acknowledge and which to ignore or to pass over. Have you ever felt smaller than when you were passed over for the team like that? If you've ever been one of those people picked last, you know how much that can sting. And conversely, if you've ever been picked first, you know how much it can make you swell with pride and not always in ways that are helpful. As much as we really hate to admit it, and as much as we might want to pretend that the opposite is true, it really does bother us when we're not acknowledged for what we do, or for our talents and capabilities. I'd like to say that other people's opinions of me don't matter one bit, but I'd be lying if I said that. Where we fall in that spectrum of people picked for the team, people acknowledged by others, really does trouble us. 
My guess is that as soon as I mentioned that scenario, several of you just wanted to cringe inside. Those ancient or maybe recent memories are just too painful. It's easier to just forget about them. Acknowledgement of others recognition of them for who they are and what they do in your life is really important. If you work really hard at something and you feel unnoticed, it's going to make you resentful. If you do your best and and no one seems to notice or care, you might not even bother next time, right? Why put in the effort if no one seems to notice? And I know you've experienced that before. Today's gospel reading is a really difficult one. But at its core, I think it's a teaching about acknowledgement. Both the good kind and the bad kind, and the consequences for what acknowledgement actually means. Jesus' teaching today is one of those passages that's both beautiful and painful. It's soft and it's hard. It's loving and it's harsh. There's just no way around it. The gospel today, like it is a lot of times, is difficult. But we're going to work on it together. Jesus begins by telling the disciples that if they thought things were bad for him, that is for Jesus, they got another thing coming because things are going to get even worse for his followers. Jesus knew that the persecutions and the hardships were still just on the horizon. And he wanted to steal them for the inevitable. If they call the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? If they're insulting me, just think how much they're going to come after you, he's saying. And then in typical fashion, Jesus reminds them of God's love and mercy. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Did you hear that? Not a single sparrow will fall to the ground apart from, which is to say separated from, God. If God knows about, is present to, cares for the death of a single sparrow, don't you think that God will know and be present to and care for you? Your creator knows the number of hairs on your head. Of course you are loved. That's a beautiful image. But we're not let off the hook just yet, not by a long shot. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Jesus is saying that some things are a two-way street. And acknowledgement of Jesus is one of those things, like forgiveness, that we gain only by practicing. Our praise and acknowledgement of God's mercy and love opens us to receiving more of the same. We are acknowledged when we have acknowledged him. This is not to say that God doesn't love us even if we turn our back to him. That's not true at all. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. But God loves everyone at all times. To grow spiritually, we need to step up to the plate. We've heard this many times about forgiveness, right? If God forgives us, we are told to forgive others. And if God knows and acknowledges us, we are told in no uncertain terms to acknowledge and to choose God as well. Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Some actions require reciprocity. Just to be crystal clear, it's not that Jesus needs that acknowledgement or God needs us to like him. That's not it at all. It's that we are in a relationship with God, folks. And like any other relationship, in order to be healthy, it has to be a two-way street. If I refuse to help my spouse to do anything or to thank her when she does something, it's not going to be a good relationship, right? In the same way, you can't say that you have a good relationship with God if you never spend time with the God you say you know. 
Folks, I hate to say it, but there are many people who purport to be Christians, but for all intents and purposes, never read scripture, barely pray, can't be bothered to serve anyone other than themselves. Imagine if you said you had a friend who you never interacted with. Is that really a friend? Now, if we're being honest with ourselves, I think we can all think of a time when we didn't give God the acknowledgement that we should have. I bet that each and every one of us has had a time when we could have made our faith known and we chose not to. Or we acted in ways that made it clear we weren't putting Jesus first in our lives. Or we didn't spend the time to deepen that relationship. I know I've done that before. I've done things I regret, either because they didn't show the faith, the hope that's within me, or they denied it, literally or figuratively. In this, though, we actually have a remarkable role model, St. Peter himself. As you all know, when push comes to shove and Jesus is arrested, Peter hangs out in the courthouse square hoping for any news about Jesus, but he's also terrified about what's going to happen both to Jesus and to those people who've been seen with him. He obviously heard Jesus' remarks that we just talked about, right? So when someone asks Peter if he wasn't part of that weird Jesus group, Peter denies it. Once, twice, and then a third time just for good measure. I guess if you're digging yourself a hole, you might as well dig all the way. Where does this lead? Does Jesus cut Peter off for having denied him? Does Jesus say, Peter, I thought I liked you. But you've been a real jerk lately. You've only been a fair-weather friend. He doesn't. Instead, we have this incredible scene at the end of the Gospel of John where the two of them meet again. And Peter must have been racked with guilt over the denials, unable or unwilling to bring up the subject, but somehow knowing that Jesus must also know about his denials, about his betrayals. And Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Peter says that he does. And Jesus asked him a second time and a third time, do you love me? And Peter, hurt and speaking through tears, says that he does. Peter denied Jesus three times. And then Jesus gave Peter three chances, three times to acknowledge him once more. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me, I will also deny. Jesus had every right to cut Peter off, to call it quits. But he doesn't do that. He gives Peter a chance to right the wrong. God's mercy and love are truly limitless. As I reflect on this, I think... We often take for granted the people in our lives who make it richer, much in the same way that we take God for granted sometimes. Don't you think it would be important, it would improve those relationships if we took the time to thank them for simply being who they are, for offering to us whatever they are able to bring? I'm shifting gears here a little, but I have to say today is also Father's Day. And I know it doesn't get nearly as much traction as Mother's Day, but maybe it's time to do something about that too and acknowledge the fathers who helped us become the people we are. If I may be so indulgent, I'd like to share with you a portion of a poem by Edgar Guest. Only a dad with a tired face coming home from the daily race, bringing little of gold or fame, to show how well he has played the game, but glad in his heart that his own rejoice to see him come and to hear his voice. Only a dad, neither rich nor proud, merely one of the surging crowd, toiling, striving from day to day, facing whatever may come his way, silent whenever the harsh condemn, bearing it all for the love of them. Only a dad, but he gives his all, to smooth the way for his children small, doing with courage stern and grim the deeds that his father did for him. This is the line that for him I pen, only a dad, 
but the best of men. Thank you, dads. You may be only a dad, but you are the best of men. Today, let's try and practice what we preach. And so I want to thank all of you who have been loyal to this community during this difficult time for sticking it out when the going got tough. I want to thank and acknowledge each and every one of you who joins us in prayer, who sings in our choir, who plays music in our worship, who gives us that positive energy and support when things are hard. And above all, I want to thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who offers us grace without measure and mercy without end, who meets us more than halfway, in whom we live and move and have our being. Without Jesus, none of this would be worth anything. With Jesus, it makes everything worthwhile. In his name, amen. join us in declaring our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join us in the prayers of the people. After each section, please offer your special intentions either silently or aloud. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is true. Render no evil for evil. Support the weak. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh,